What is up you guys, Jaysick Poker out with another PLO live cash game hand review. And today I'm gonna to review a high stakes 100-100 PLO game on Hustler Live that aired two weeks ago. And guys, this game was wild. Uh, the first hand, let's go ahead and start here. We see Roscoe opening under the gun with King Jack 7-6 double suited. As you can see, um, you know, and he gets called by six players. <laughs> So in a crazy game, this is what you can expect, which is why I definitely like having a limping range early position in a loose game. Um, you know, it's just going to be so hard to play out of position versus six other players, right? 24 other cards. Uh, but Mark and Jamie's hands are, are way too loose, but everyone else's call is fine. Uh, but the pot is $4,300 going to a flop, which is pretty hilarious. And let's check out the flop here. You can, you can tell these guys are just having fun. A bunch of recreational players, which is great. Um, but the flop comes King Deuce 2, sorry, King 10 2 with two diamonds. And let's see what everyone has here. Kenny actually flops a monster wrap with the third nut flush draw. And honestly, I don't mind just potting this flop with the stack to pot ratio uh, 2 to 1 because you can potentially get some weaker hands to fold like King X or a pair with the lower flush draw, and possibly some hands like two pair, or, or ten two, like 10-2 or king two. But he decides to check, and let's see what everyone else does. You can just tell the whole vibe of this game is just super relaxed, everyone having fun, it's kind of like a home game. Uh, but everyone checks as well. Let's check out the turn. All right, turn is a juicy one. Turn comes the four of hearts, which brings in a backdoor of heart draw. And now let's see what uh, Kenny decides to do here with his uh, wrap and third nut flush draw. All right, and Kenny actually decides to pot, uh, which I, you know, I like, right? The reason why is because uh, especially after everyone checks, there's a lot of dead money in the pot and you could potentially bluff a lot of brick rivers if you miss because if someone does flat, they most likely have a draw. All right, let's check out the action. With the heart draw as well. Kenny's got the 4,300. Haiti makes the call. 4,300, right? Yep. 43? 43 is the I mean, look how many chips are on on this table. I've definitely played in games like this in home games, and it gets insane. Okay, and he gets three callers. All right, obviously, um, you know, and this is why you want to have a lot of backup if you're if you're gonna pot multi-way, right? Because even if a bunch of people call you, at least you have a really good wrap with the third nut flush draw. Um, but Haiti decides to call. With his uh, low wrap, with his lap wrap and a backdoor hard draw, which I don't like, especially six ways, because if you call, someone could potentially rip it in behind you and you're left in a tough spot. Plus, there's a chance that your draws are dominated by hands like King X of Hearts, uh, Nut Flush Draws, but he decides to come in. Now, Jamie here with 5 4 3 2 has a really interesting decision. Uh, with bottom two and a and a uh, open ended straight draw being six ways i do like a fold because most likely your two pair isn't good plus you're drawing to an open ended straight draw where even if you do hit an ace chances are someone's going to have queen jack a very high percentage of the time um, but hey it's hustler live so i i guess i don't mind it i think you got to call if it's hustler <laughs> right um, for image purposes uh, but Ryan decides to come along with the call, which I also don't like. You know, sure, you have top pair with the double gutter, but there's two flush draws out there, which kills a lot of your potential straight outs. But again, it's Hustler Live, so whatever. <laughs> but let's go to a river. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a debated uh, 
Four pairs JD Ooh. there. Full house. Ooh, juicy river. Very interesting. Kenny goes all in. Snap goes all in. All right, so the river comes a deuce of diamonds and Kenny hits his flush and Jamie backdoors a boat. So Jamie Jamie basically hits that perfect card uh, besides an offsuit six. Kenny decides to snap pot, which I don't like, especially versus three other opponents because you're not going to get any worse hands to call you, right? Most smaller flushes are going to fold on a paired board. So really the only hands are going to call you are hands like potentially um, ace high flushes, queen high flushes might hero call you, or boats like hands like king deuce, four deuce, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, plus even if the board doesn't pair, I don't like snap shoving here because it makes it look so obvious that you have a flush. So I would prefer to, uh, um, prefer to check to possibly induce or trap uh, hands that missed, like Queen Jack Nine Eight. You know, but that being said, Jamie obviously cannot fold here ever. So let's see what he does. <laughs> so Kenny all in with the flush. Jamie makes the call. Jamie's gonna win. All right, and he does make the call. Um, so you know, you gotta call unless you you know um, unless you think. Give me one second here. But yeah, if Kenny would have just potted the flop, he would have potentially won a huge pot here. I had Ryan or Haiti called on the flop, but unfortunately for him, he runs into the old good old deuce four. <laughs> um, so that's a pretty hilarious hand. Now let's get to the next hand of the night. And this is pretty hilarious hand too. But now we're almost, you know, four hours into the game. And everyone's really deep now. The average stack is almost 250 to 300 big blinds. And if you're in a game like this, this is where you're going to print a lot of money because people are going to overvalue hands and make a ton of mistakes post swap. Okay, now, seven players limp in, and if I were Kenny here, with ace-10, 10, 10, sorry, ace-8, 10, 4, double suited, I would strongly consider potting on the button. You have very good connectivity, plus it's double suited, and no one's raised, so you're most likely up against a bunch of weak ranges. Um, but he decides to call, and now we do see a flop here. And the flop comes Jack five four rainbow. So Driss flops top two and Brayden flops top and bottom. Let's see what they do here. And Roscoe has a gutter. We're just gonna keep doing double board pillow bomb pots now. Just like full DJ on. Got about two hours left in that show as well. Driss is Such a crazy Kenny hand. Calls, Kenny calls. Every pot. Okay. So Driss, Driss pots it, and I like it, especially having the six blocker, which blocks a lot of straight draws or wraps. Um, it's going to make it easier for you to um, continue on, on, on a lot of turns. Brayden with top and bottom calls, and I do not like it, especially when Driss pots into six players. You gotta start thinking, what is Driss's range here, potting into six players? He mostly, most likely has at least top two or any set, and versus any value range, you are absolutely crushed. Jack, pocket jacks beat you, pocket fives, pocket fours, jack five, right? Um, but And then Kenny decides to call with bottom pair and two backdoor flush draws, and that is what you call a champion call. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Let's go to a turn. It's gonna be off the hook now, right? As we watch this one play out. Okay. All right, and the turn comes a four, which is the absolutely worst card for Kenny. And Braden gets extremely lucky hitting one of his few outs. Now, if you're Driss versus two callers, you're in a pretty tricky spot. 
because they could potentially hands ha have hands like four, five, six, seven, right? Four, six, seven, eight. Wraps with bottom pair. Maybe even jack four sometimes if, if they're just really loose, right? Um, but blocking a lot of boats, I actually like a small bet here, like quarter pot, because all the draws are going to fold. Uh, you're going to deny a lot of equity for cheap, potentially even getting uh, over pairs to fold and give you respect here. Because again, you pot it into six players. Now the board pairs, typically people are going to give you a ton of respect. Um, and, and if someone does call, you can easily shut down on rivers because they're most likely going to have a four in their hand. Like I said, hands like four, five, six, seven, five, four, six, eight, jack, four, six, eight. But let's see what he does. Okay, now Driss does decide to check and play it safe, which I don't mind, especially in a crazy game versus two players. Um, and then Brayden gets actually tricky here and checks as well, which I do like because you have one of the worst boats here. Um, again, you lose versus 5-5 five, five and Jack-Jack, and really the only hand you're looking to stack is a hand like 4-5. Plus, you let potential straight draws get there. Let's see what Kenny does. Kenny's all in. Oops. Brayden, by the way, does have a full house with the Jack Four. He's got the Robbie. I call. Oh my God. I think Brayden just said call. No, Driss called. What? Wow, this this hand is pretty insane so far. Kenny goes all in with trips and is gonna see the bad news once Brayden calls, and that is exactly why you should fold on the flop if you're Kenny. Um, right? And then Driss calls with top two. I mean, there's like no bluffs here. A straight draw isn't gonna pot three-way most likely after someone pots the flop and checks the turn on a paired board. So I really don't understand what he's hoping Kenny has. Um, but now if you're Brayden, I mean, you gotta be concerned, right? Because what is Driss potting the flop with and check calling a shove on the turn? Pocket jacks or pocket fives is a huge part of his range. The, the worst hand may be four or five, which you block. Uh, maybe even ace, ace, who knows? But having position in this wild game, you just cannot fold a boat because who knows, like I said, Driss might show up with a hand like this or, or, or uh, pocket aces or kings with the gutter, just thinking that Kenny is full of it. Uh, but as expected, you know, a Brayden. Let's see what he does here. Maybe I'm missing something. So Driss makes the call. <laughs> Tuckman says maybe I'm missing Driss something. Driss makes the call. And Brayden's got to decide, am I, could I be up against fives full? Yeah, po possibly. It's scary. He's got fours full of jacks, but I mean, there are a lot of hands that can beat him right now. Right? Yeah, Especially true. Jacks true, beat Tuckman. Fives can beat him. But this is Hustle Live. You got an all in and a call. Putting your pro hat? Hmm? You putting your pro hat? I, I, I genuinely don't know what, I don't know what Tris is doing here, but just obviously put Kenny on a bluff. It's hard to put anyone on a bluff at this point. I mean, it's a paired board. It's a lockdown board. You can't win the pot. And Brayden makes the call. All right, Brayden does make the call. We go to a river. Kenny actually has 25%, which is not bad. Oh, and he does. Spikes the ace ball. Oh my god, Kenny gets there like a champion. Runner, runner, full house. And Kenny scoops a $74,000 pot. And he walks away not even realizing it. And then turns over his hand and Brayden. Let's just look at Brayden's reaction. He is stunned. Oh my god, understandably so. But that is live PLO for you guys. In a crazy game, you're going to see a lot more hands like this because people are just playing way more loose. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this PLO hand review. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button for more PLO content. Soon I'll be putting out my own live cash games uh, sessions again. But 
Uh, I'll also be continuously putting out hand reviews since I do find them to be pretty fun, especially right now because it's kind of booming uh, with these live streams. So let me know what you guys thought of the hands and how you would play them in the comment section or if you saw, thought something was hilarious. Um, but until the next video, peace out, you guys.